representative of humanity. We present to you inflammatory earthling rants with help from Mr. Piotr Krapoyki. The earthlings are Flame. Are the earthlings a flame? Yes, the earthlings are a flame. And consequently, the earthlings are inflammatory.
and even here, at the edge of the abyss, Life Pursuit Manufacture and Sale Continue the forever conflict for which we Earthlings were created and educated. Itself, specifically ranting language, must resort to its original task.
Hey! Remember what's next? They do or they don't. We do exist. We do exist. We do exist. Mm -hmm. That is a dubious proposition. <laughs> Why don't you try something else? <laughs> do we exist? Do we exist? Do we exist? Or Or not. Or not. Or not. I don't Right. 
governing his many estates. His mother dies when he is a toddler. So Prince Kropotkin is brought up by servants and tutors. <laughs> At a young age, he becomes aware of the brutality of the surf system. And here you see Kropotkin, age 12, renouncing his princely title. Just call me Peter. <laughs> 1861. There you see Kropotkin experiencing profound joy. <laughs> has just proclaimed the end of serfdom. Finally. And here you see Kropotkin in 1862, graduating first in his class from the military academy. <laughs> Mr. Kropotkin? Yes? What will you do now? I want to be someone useful. Send me to Siberia. In Siberia, he makes new friends who lend him books. Here you see Kropotkin reading Pierre Joseph Proudhon, becoming acquainted with anarchist ideas. This makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and also reading Darwin's recently published theory of evolution. Fascinated, but also aghast <laughs> at how philosophers and politicians are increasingly misusing the concept survival of the fittest to justify slavery, poverty, and war. I believe that they mistakenly elevate the pitiless struggle for personal advantage to the height of a biological principle. 1864, Kropotkin accepts a position in a geographical expedition <laughs> across eastern Siberia. He attempts to work on a theory of mountain ranges and high plateaus. Yes, but I am also interested in finding evidence of Darwin's theory. And here he is. everywhere is a spirit of collaboration with little to no conflict between animals of the same species. He sees wolves hunting in packs. He sees birds helping each other feed and stay warm. He sees horses forming defensive formations against predators. Later, he expands his observations to bees. Lizards, beetles, surely fish, and eventually early and medieval human organizations. And here you see Kropotkin in 1902 receiving a copy of his recently published book, Mutual Aid, A Factor of Evolution. Mr. Kropotkin. Yes? Can you read something for us, please? Okay. <laughs> I saw mutual aid and mutual support carry on to an extent which made me suspect in it a feature of the greatest importance for the maintenance of life, the preservation of each species, and evolution. <laughs>
you see a forest of screaming trees. <laughs> She, who was well known for the power of her silence, is now screaming at the top of her lungs. is urging humanity to scream. Because war, the human invention, is not only human anymore, but is directed against heaven and earth, and must be opposed by heaven and earth in all their representations. We, member of the Screaming Tree Society, forever misused as fuel for the fire of the war wagers, must now adopt tree speech beyond the tree silence and add tree screams to our life's vocabulary. Ha ha ha! 
and trees, such social beings.
Commission remain top priorities for the administration.
first, who is under threat by the now and the not yet. Here are three examples of the now. The man who cannot get out of bed even though the moon tries to pull him out. The chair, the chair, in deep despair, in the nowhere. <laughs> and the car, neither here nor there, which drives forever away from the sun and into hell. And here, you see ladder number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The Earthling rescue squads coming to the aid of Mother Earth. Examples of the not yet. <laughs> of mutual hatred could weed out the feeling of human solidarity because it has been nurtured by all our preceding evolution. That's right. In our press, our law courts, 
our government offices. Even our fiction and our poetry. Suffer from this same one-sidedness. They hand down, they hand down to posterity the most minute descriptions of every war, every battle and skirmish, every contest and act of violence, every kind of individual suffering. But they hardly bear any trace of the countless acts of mutual support and devotion which every one of us knows from our own experience. Excuse me? <laughs> Will our life learn the trees screaming before the abyss? Do we exist enough to stop our wrong existing? <coughs> are we inflammatory enough to stop ourselves?